The original iPhone really shook up the phone market in 2007, and it was the start of Apple's domination of the smartphone industry. But since then, Android has become the most popular operating system. The iPhone 6 is Apple's response to the ever-increasing sizes of smartphones, as it's now offered in a larger 4.7-inch form factor with an even slimmer aluminum build. The G4 is LG's latest flagship device that packs in some of the most powerful hardware, a killer 2K display, and an amazing camera along with the latest version of Android. But is it enough? How does LG's G4 stack up to the iPhone 6? Let's find out. Starting things off with pricing and availability, both the G4 and iPhone 6 will cost you $199 with a 2 year contract for the base storage model. The iPhone comes in 16, 64, and 128GB flavors, while as of right now the only storage option available for the G4 is 32GB. However, the G4 does have a micro SD card slot that supports up to 128GB, so that's definitely something to consider. In terms of color options, the G4 can be bought with a leather or plastic back, and plastic color options include ceramic white, titanium gray, and also gold. The leather options vary from a dark maroon to a nice tan. And as soon as the links to the backs go live, I'll be sure to link you all to them in the description, along with the link to the 128GB microSD card. And the iPhone on the other hand comes in space gray, silver, and gold colors. Physically, the G4 doesn't quite feel like a $600 phone. Its plastic back and metallic shiny edges are okay, but they aren't quite what I was expecting. For me, a case is absolutely necessary with this phone because it's incredibly slippery, and for me, a drop waiting to happen. However, the build of the device isn't all completely negative. I'm a huge fan of the rear-facing buttons, as LG has certainly made improvements there. But even though the buttons are improved, the speaker most definitely isn't. It's moderately loud and inconveniently placed on the back, which is a place that's very easy to cover up. Moving over to the iPhone, Apple has kept the metal backing, but this year it has smooth curves going around the edges, which makes it much slicker than last year's iPhone 5S. Aesthetically speaking, I truly hate the new antenna design. Apple has outlined the top and bottom of the back of the device with these ugly looking antennas, and along with that, there's also the protruding camera, which just doesn't blend well. For that reason, I've been using the Rearth Ring Key Fusion Case. It's the best one I've used so far, and I'll be linking my video review on screen and also in the description. And like the G4, the iPhone 6 also suffers from that same poor speaker quality, but if I had to take one, it would be the G4s. Moving over to the front of the G4, we'll find a beautiful 5.5 inch Quad HD 2560 by 1440 display that completely dwarfs the iPhone 6's 4.7 inch 750p resolution screen. And side by side, the G4's panel looks much sharper and crisper. The difference is even more noticeable when viewing a higher quality 4K video on YouTube. So there's no doubt in my mind that the G4's display is much better than the iPhone 6's. When it comes to iOS devices versus Android devices, software will always be the differentiator. And if you don't like iOS, then go with Android. And if you don't like Android, then go with iOS. However, if you're a fan of both like I am, it's hard to take sides. So the iPhone 5S runs the latest version of iOS, iOS 8, and one great thing about Apple is that because their operating system is more locked down, you'll be guaranteed updates for at least the next several years, which is something that isn't guaranteed with G4. As far as the new features on iOS 8 goes, there's now widgets in the notification bar, the ability to quickly respond to messages in apps, Apple Pay allows you to make payments directly from your iPhone 6, and there's also now talk to type technology. All of these are great additions to the iOS operating system, but many of these features are also on Android and aren't just completely exclusive to iOS. That being said, the iPhone 6 is very quick and fluid, and there's no hiccups or jump screens or anything like that. That's something you won't have to worry about with the iPhone 6, and I'm sure if you do decide to buy it, you won't be disappointed with the software experience. One awesome feature that is exclusive to the iPhone 6 is Touch ID. It allows you to unlock your phone with your fingerprints and also make payments with applications like PayPal and purchase items through the App Store without using your password. It's an awesome feature. When it comes to the software on the LG G4, I personally am not a huge fan of LG's custom skin. 
things like the stock dialer icon not matching up with stock Google icons is something that bothers me. However, there are some definite pros to the openness of Android, which means the software can be completely customized by the user, so if anyone does end up purchasing the G4, you can always change the software to your liking. A couple cool features include smart settings, which automatically turns on Wi-Fi as soon as I get home, and it also toggles it off when I leave home. Another feature is smart cleaning, which is great for people that don't know how, or just don't have the time to go through and unclutter their device of unwanted files. Smart cleaning can be set to remind you to clean up your device every week, month, or not at all, so that's pretty awesome. Moving on to the battery life, the iPhone 6 rocks a smaller 1810mAh battery that will last you through a full day. I've been putting it on the charger every night with about 10-15% left, which isn't as good as the G4, but it is decent. The G4 on the other hand boasts a larger 3000mAh battery, and considering the display has 2K resolution and is 5.5 inches, I've been very impressed with battery life. A typical example of battery life would be me unlocking the G4 at 5.30 in the morning at 100% and finishing up my day at about 8pm with about 20% left with 3 hours or so of on-screen time. And to give an idea of my usage, I watch a lot of video and stream music with SoundCloud throughout the day, so I'm just about your average user or I actually probably use my phone a little bit more than most average people. Next up is camera performance. The iPhone 6 has an 8 megapixel camera, but don't let the 8 megapixels fool you because it definitely has one of the best cameras on the market. The G4s, however, does, in my opinion, edge out the iPhone 6 when it comes to camera performance. Picture is super crisp and sharp and is perfect for anyone ranging from a mom who wants pictures of her kids or camera professionals that are the best on the market. Either way though, you really can't go wrong with the iPhone 6 or the LG G4's camera. One major difference between these two devices is obviously going to be their size. For anyone with smaller hands, the G4 probably isn't that great of an option unless you're okay with two-handing the phone all the time. And if you don't have access to either of these devices, I would highly recommend heading down to Best Buy to experience both of them before you make your purchase. Now the LG G4 is an incredible phone. It features a killer display, good battery life, and a great camera. The iPhone 6 offers a polished operating system, new updated screen size, and a stellar camera as well. For me, I prefer the G4 because I enjoy Android and the larger display, but which phone is best for you? Well, that choice does have to be made for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.